This block is a gauge block. I use it for all kinds of depths. It's real important to making a purple vase. Oh, I put a piece of fresh cherry over here to compare to one that's aged a little bit. They do get dark with age. It's oxidation. It's a nice tubing cut. It's got a special stainless steel cutting wheel in it. It's by Lennox. I like rigid tools, but I tool a lot working this stainless steel. And around and around, just like I did a little bit ago, to cut that long piece in half. exchanger sleeve that goes between the outer wall of the wooden Purple Days body and the heat exchanger itself drops down inside. I hope you enjoyed watching that. This is the central tube of a Purple Days heat exchanger. It's 304 stainless steel. It's aircraft tubing. It comes in about seven foot lengths and then we cut it into sections. When you cut it, it gets a burr. And these burrs are sharp and hard. They need to be removed. One end is the end that you're putting your vapor tip into. It's the top. It'll also get a crossbar hole drilled through it. The other end gets treated with a rather expensive tool, and that sharp, hard edge will dig into it and shorten the life of the tool. You need that. Take care of that bird. Round it over. cutlery is made out of, it's what all our cookware is made out of. Food grade. And the heat exchanger is 100% stainless steel. 304 and 316 stainless. everything too. It's like it's ready for the table. It's like you're going to be eating with it just like your forks and spoons. Hot soapy water. There you go. Nice and smooth. Both ends ready for it. Flaring operation for the heat exchanger tube. It's a nice uh, aircraft industry flaring tool made for doing stainless and titanium. Of course, we used stainless. that gets washed off with dishwashing detergent and hot soapy water. This flare gets modified later on my anvil when I spring tension the heat exchanger assembly. But for now it's a 37 degree flare. Normal plumbing is 45, but this is a special tool. There you go, that's the start of it.
Well, I can't show the boring operation that puts the crossbar in, but these are a couple of tools used. One is the gauge block. I use it for a lot of different measurements. Uh, one of the wooden clamps I use, a Jorgensen clamp. And then a special tool that I've built, and I'm not going to show that. Crossbar holes have been drilled. Now we need to deburr those. This is the top of the heat exchanger, so one last polish with the steel wool. Piece of 16th inch 304 stainless steel rod, and that goes through and becomes the crossbar. use cutting oils and there will probably be some metal shavings here. So everybody's going to go for a couple of hot soapy baths and be ready for the dinner table. The whole alignment check. Make sure your drill bit didn't take off and go a funny direction through this hard metal before you waste your time putting the whole heat exchanger together. It's 25 or 26 parts to make up the mass and the fins. They're all stainless steel too, 304 and 316 stainless. Top disc goes on. Crossbar gets put in. This gets tension now. Well, that's how you make a Purple Days heat exchanger. All stainless steel. It has the 72 radiating fins. Air coming in through the holes goes over those fins, picks up the heat quicker. It also allows the unit to recover quicker between draws. We use all ROHS compliant electronics parts. That's restriction of hazardous substances. That means there's no lead in this vape. None at all. We use Buzz Butter. We make it ourselves out of beeswax and natural plant oils. It's toxin-free finish. No petrochemical finishes for us. Hope you've enjoyed the film. I hope to make another one for you.